Welcome to the Tool Hut channel. Today we have a pretty interesting one, I think. We have a 2015 BMW 528i. No left side headlamp. Stand by. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below. Alright, so here we go. We've got a 14 BMW 528i. No left side headlight. Now I'll give you a little backstory here. The car's been in a collision. It was collision on the right-hand side. The left-hand headlamp worked prior to the collision and after the collision, but not after the repair. Kind of interesting. So, the right-side headlight is a brand new headlight from the BMW dealer, installed by the BMW dealer or the collision shop. I don't know which. Don't really matter. So, the car has been to the BMW dealer, it's been to a collision shop obviously, and the BMW dealer wants to install a left side headlamp, brand new, which takes this car out of the repair dollars. So if this car requires a left side headlamp from the dealer, it is going to total this car. The owner of the car does not want it totaled. His son works at a shop that I do some work for, and his son recommended that he call me. So, I have not been involved with this car prior to this part of it right now. And I'm going to go over a couple things with you as we get going here and show you uh, kind of what I figured out. I'll give you a spoiler. It doesn't need a headlight. Stand by. Okay, so just like any other diagnosis we would start, we're going to start with just a basic uh, health report here. So it's 2015 BMW 528i, and we have some codes in it. So let's just start with letting you know that it is an F chassis car, BMW. So you cannot do any coding or programming on a replacement module until all modules communicate. So everything the car was equipped with has to work before you can do any coding or programming. I don't know whose infinite wisdom that was, but it does present its challenges, especially for a mobile guy. So we're just going to scroll through the inspection report here, or health report. So the right side module, like I said, has been replaced by the dealer. There's no current coding in it, obviously, because the left side what doesn't work. And also, down here in the footwell module, the footwell module is basically telling us it can't talk to it. So we notice that the left side headlamp is not up here with any codes. It doesn't work. And we'll just kind of scroll through the system light or the list here. <clears throat> and see if it's on the list for modules that communicate with no codes. And it's not. So we've got 31 modules on a BMW with no codes. We have three modules that have codes. Again, this uh, this is a sunroof, nor normalization. I am not concerned with that because that'll all be initialized and zeroed in the programming sequence. So we got a no message, exterior lights, front electronics, one left, uh, which is also this headlamp module here. So again, that's what we're going to focus on, this 800 Frank Charlie 8 Lin bus. So that's our clue that we got a problem on our left side. Why it wasn't there, why it worked before, why it doesn't work now, oh, we're going to figure that out. Okay, you probably agree with me. Need time to get these headlights out. 
which means the bumper needs to come off. Yes, this is one of the advantages of being a mobile guy. I give the customer directions, they follow them, and then they call me back when they're done. Like I said, this is at a guy's house, but he's willing to do the, the removal. So, we'll continue when we get the bumper off. Okay, so I guess I'm going to have to apologize here. I thought I had some pictures of the bumper off and some of the processes that we did. So, if you're familiar with BMW, the connectors for the headlights are the same side to side. And it's on what they call a LIN bus, which means it doesn't matter where you plug it in to the car, the module always sees it as whatever module it is. So if it's the left side headlamp, it doesn't matter where you plug it in, it'll always see it as the left side headlamp. So what I did, just to verify that the, the car had integrity to turn on the headlight, I took the working right side headlamp, brand new from the dealer, or wherever it came from, and plugged it into the left side of the car, and it lit, just like I kind of expected it to. So what this did is this eliminated my need to check powers, grounds, LIN bus, all that stuff. It also communicated as the right side headlamp with, this, with the vehicle. So now I know that my problem is, in fact, inside the headlamp. So let me get a diagram here let's see if we can figure it out okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to get the writing diagram up here so this is our junction box with the fuses in it we don't really care uh, this module here is our footwell module right here this right here this is our footwell module again not really a concern because we've already confirmed that the right side hand lamp works where the left hand headlamp goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this part. So what we're going to do is scroll over here. So this is our Lin bus line comes in here, comes into into the headlamp. Now these are the LEDs. These are the directional motors that move the headlamp side to side. So, my thought is, is we can, my suspicion is, is that one of these devices is pulling down our LIN bus. And why the, the dealer said they wanted to put a headlamp in it, I think, comes down to pure laziness. So, what I want to do is I want to take working parts out of the working headlamp and put them in the left side headlamp until I get things to work. I don't know if that makes sense. Or I can just start unplugging things and see if I can get it to work. So that's what I decided to do is let's just unplug. The LEDs are really easy to get to once you got the little cover off. So once we got the cover off, I decide let's just unplug the two LEDs and see if the headlamp works. Obviously the, the halos aren't going to work, but let's just see what happens. So, yep, you guessed it. Very first part I unplugged, the left side headlamp now communicates on the left hand side of the car. The LEDs don't work. But that's kind of expected because they're not plugged in. We actually took them right out. Now, whether this was related to the collision or not, I'm not going to speculate on that. I can tell you that once I eliminated the LEDs, the rest of the headlamp works. Uh, the turn signal on the right side headlamp doesn't work. But BMWs have a teaching process for the turn signal, so I'm not overly concerned with that. So now it's time to uh, get a set of LEDs for this headlamp, and then we'll program them. Let me just show you 
see what we end up with here. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I am using the BMW iComp Next. And I've subscribed to BMW ISTA. Now I'm not going to go through the whole procedure of programming this. But I wanted you to see the steps for putting this headlamp module in. So we're going to have to initialize the new headlamp positioning module. And teach in the turn signal. We also need to teach in the LEDs. It takes about 60 seconds. So I just wanted to go over that with you. This is part of the, the final report here. So uh, it says the adaptation of the LEDs is successfully completed. Adaptation of the LED to the left head headlamp was performed. Blah, blah, blah. LEDs are now taught in. So I'm not going to, like I say, I'm not going to go through the whole thing with you. But we were successful in the end. So instead of a $4,000 headlamp from the dealer, we ended up putting a set of aftermarket, or the customer ended up putting a set of LEDs, aftermarket LEDs. Let me show you what the car looks like. Well, there it is. Success at last. The vehicle now has uh, turn signals on both sides, LEDs on both sides, headlamps on both sides, and no message on the dash that says service the headlamps. So life is a great thing when it works out. A couple lessons, a couple takeaways from this is that some a couple other people had worked on this car before I got to it. We had several bent pins in different modules, several diff different problems that we ended up with in the end, mostly because people that didn't care what they were doing. There was all kinds of fasteners missing from the bumper. There was all kinds of trim fasteners missing from inside the car. The customer resolved all of that himself. Uh, in the end, we were we had a pretty good repair. We felt pretty good about it. It is a, I guess, an older car. It was the thir 12 or 13, whatever it was. And the customer was happy when it was all said and done. So I don't do a lot of stuff like this at people's houses especially a job this involved but this guy was equipped and he was committed to working with me till we got it done it did take me several trips to get out here to do it so all right thumbs up thumbs down i know this was kind of a weird video i made it over several uh different trips over there i lost some uh some pictures stuff like that and I apologize for that, but I thought in the end it was a pretty simple repair, and I just followed my my diagrams. Yeah, I did some swap tronics and didn't really do any electrical diagnostics, but when you got one that works in both sides of the car, you know you don't have a problem with the car. So just a matter of figuring out what the problem is. All right, again, thumbs up, thumbs down questions or comments down below keep them clean or I delete them have a great day while you got a second why don't you go ahead and click that like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below